Want to know what the key to happiness is? If so, you'll love today's episode as I'm sharing happiness boosting yoga and 10 daily habits of happy people. Hey High Vibes Nation, I'm Mandy, Life Cheerleader, and I uplift others to raise their vibration. I feel thrilled to have you joining me for an episode on a topic that I absolutely love, happiness. I'll be sharing happiness boosting yoga poses with y'all, plus 10 daily habits of the happiest people so you can start boosting your mood today. With such an uplifting topic, I want to dive right in with y'all. But before I do, you know the drill. Please make sure you give this video a little thumbs up like, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you'll be informed each and every time I upload a new video. And I have lots coming up for you guys, so make sure you do. And you'll want to make sure to stick around till the very end of the video where I'll be sharing with y'all a happiness hack that is super simple but a game changer. So you won't want to miss it. All right, now let's get our bodies flowing happy. All right, guys, what are you going to need for today's practice? Well, I always like to say you just need an open mind, open heart, and open spirit. But if you are someone who loves their props, I'm going to recommend just a few items if you are one of those people. So for today's yoga practice, it's always good to have a little towel on hand, <laughs> no pun intended, a hand towel, uh, just for, you know, wiping up sweat. And also this can come in handy um, for stretches if you don't have a yoga strap, which brings me to the next item, which is a yoga strap. Now this can come in handy for flexibility, for helping you stretch a little deeper into some of these stretches. So if you have a yoga strap, um, an alternative for this would be a belt, like a fashion belt. So you could use that as well to help you with your stretching. There's another item. Another thing I always like to suggest is an all natural uh, yoga mat cleaner, especially with what we're dealing with in the world right now. We want to always make sure that we're keeping all of our items really clean and you know, it's always good to go more on the natural side, I believe with cleaning agents because you don't want to be ingesting lots of harmful chemicals. So, and also guys, I'm going to put a link to all the products I'm sharing with y'all today um, below in the video description. So if you want to pick anything up, you can do that after after the video so there you go another item I always like to suggest is having a yoga block this can come in handy for a you know multitude of reasons when you're practicing so yoga block is always good and it's always good to also have a either your yoga bolster or you can use up a folded uh, blanket or towel if you like to uh, prop different parts of your body up during practice as well. And of course, last but not least, if you do have a yoga mat, I always suggest getting it out for practice because it does come in handy is in terms of just having more stability and grip when you're doing poses. So that is it for props. With today's practice, we're gonna be holding each pose for about 20 seconds, and they all are happiness boosting <laughs> yoga poses, but if you would prefer to do it as a flow and do each posture one after another, you can do that, or if you wanna hold them a little bit longer, you guys are free to do that too. It's all about you getting the exact practice you want and experience you want out of this entire yoga experience with me today. And just make sure that you honor your body and don't compare yourself to anyone else out there. This is all about you making time and self-love for yourself in your yoga practice. So let's get to it.
All right, guys, now for our happiness boosting yoga. I don't know about y'all, but I am feeling so pumped for our practice today. Could just be the 90s pop music I was listening to before recording. <laughs> but no, I am so excited to do this with y'all. So our first pose of the day is going to be a forward fold. So let's do it together. So you just wanna get onto your mat about feet uh, hip distance apart. You're gonna take a nice deep inhale. Hands up to the sky and let's bring it down. Exhale and let's just come. Now, if you're only here, it is all good. Make sure you have a little micro bend in your knees and come down. I like to put my hands behind my cat or on my calves, I should say because it gives you some leverage to pull down. Now, if you're just here, it's all good, guys. Just go as low as your body feels that you're still honoring it today. So I'm just gonna bring it down all the way. Nice, and let's hold it wherever you're at. Let's just take a few breaths here. Feel that nice, deep stretch in the backs of your legs. Nice, guys. Let's take one more inhale. And slowly start to come out of it. Hands on your hips. Let's take one more breath in and hinge up all the way so you reach the top and there is your forward fold okay guys number two for today for asanas is the upward facing dog so for up dog we're going to come to the end of our mat we're going to have our legs about hip distance apart again. You're gonna take a nice deep breath in. Beautiful. On your exhale, let's bring it down. You're gonna place your palms at the top of your mat. And for up dog, we're gonna come here, drop it down, breathe out. Now for up dog, you're going to raise your chest as you breathe in. And then we're gonna get into the entire position. So let's do it together, breathe in. And come into that. And breathe out. Honoring your spine in this posture especially. Want to make sure your legs are off of your mat. Squeeze that belly in. Make sure you're squeezing your glutes. Nice. Open that chest nice and wide. Spread your shoulder blades apart and let's take a few deep breaths in together. Mm, this one feels so, so good. One more. And drop it all the way down, guys. Whew. Beautiful. That was Up Dog. All right, guys, you're doing awesome. Pose number three is the garland pose. So for this one, we're actually gonna come into the middle of our mat. And basically another term for this one is just the yogi squat. So essentially all you're gonna do is take a nice deep inhale. Beautiful, let's bring our palms in front of our chest here in prayer. And basically you're just going to squat down like such. 
Beautiful guys, beautiful. Now you wanna just make sure that your elbows are in between your thighs. You can actually use them to kind of push out as leverage there. And again, let's come into prayer position with our palms and let's just keep it here. Make sure that the bottoms of your feet are completely in contact with your mat. Let's have a smile on our face for happiness yoga. Let's take a nice few deep breaths in this position. One more, and breathe it out. Wow, I feel like I'm glowing now. I love this posture. There you have your garland pose. All right, we're about to do one that is super cute with the name, but it's also a really sweet posture for boosting your mood. This one is called a seated star pose. So we're gonna come again to the middle of our mats. If you're already there, great. Let's take a nice inhale. Ah, beautiful. Now with this one, we're actually gonna come down and basically get into butterfly position. So you wanna make sure with this one especially that your sit bones, which are the two bones at the bottom of your spinal cord are directly on top of your mat. Now, if you can only put your legs or knees, I should say, out about this far, it's all good, guys. Don't feel like you have to have your knees down to the mat. I am going to do it because my body is able to at this point, but if you're here, you are more than welcome to just stay here for today. So what you wanna do is just come into that butterfly position again, making sure your sit bones are directly on your mat. And from here, you're just going to take your hands, you're going to cup them around your feet, and you're going to slowly start to inch your way down. And again, honor wherever you're at in your practice today. I'm going to show you the full version because after years of practicing, I'm able to do this. Let's bring it down as far as you can, all the way down, beautiful. And if you can get your head to the ground, wonderful. Let's have this position for a few breaths together. All right, one more inhale and exhale. Let's bring it up. Beautiful guys. Let's do a little bit of fluttering with our legs and bodies. You can bring your feet straight again. Let's just do a little shake and there you guys have it. There is your seated star pose. All right, guys, pose number five is one that I absolutely love. And I always feel so powerful yet so happy after doing it, which is the upward plank. So it's basically like doing the opposite of the normal plank we do. So let's do it together. So for upward plank, you're actually just gonna come down seated onto your mat. Now with this one, you just wanna make sure that your feet are directly in front of you, pointed. And this one, you're gonna have your arms a little bit behind you here. I'll just move my hair so you guys can see. You wanna bring, make sure that you're tucking in your tummy and you're gonna have everything, just think strong in this posture. This one, your feet can be together or if you'd prefer, just a little bit apart. 
and you're basically just going to use your arms to push yourself up. So let's do it together on the count of three. One, two, breathe in and breathe it out. Now with this one, you just want to make sure that your spine is in a straight line. You don't want to be sinking your gluteus maximus and you don't want to be protruding your pelvis either. You just want to have a nice straight line. Again, make sure that you're engaging your core, engage your glutes, engage your legs and arms, and then you can just let your head naturally drop so you're not putting a strain on your neck. Let's just hold ourselves up here for a few breaths and smile. One more deep breath in and out and bring it down. Whew. This one's so funny because it looks so simple, but it's actually a very, very powerful pose. So there you guys have it. There's your upward plank. All right, guys, pose number six is one of my favorites in all of yoga. It is a heart opener, but it is also a happiness booster. This is camel pose. So let's do it together. So for camel, you're just gonna come onto your shins. Your legs and feet are about hip distance apart. You wanna make sure that you're squeezing in your tummy. Let's engage those glutes. Now with this one, if you wanna just reach back, there's a few ways you can do this. This one, if you wanna just have your arms behind you and just come up with your pelvis, you can do this as variation one. I'm gonna do the full pose. If you are at this level, feel free to do either or, it's totally okay. You wanna have your shoulder blades spread apart again. Make sure you're contracting those ab muscles and those glutes of yours. You're gonna take a nice deep breath in and breathe out. And while you do, just reach back. Beautiful guys, grab those ankles and drop your head down. <sighs> Let's take a nice inhale together and just keep breathing naturally. Close your eyes and just relax even deeper, sinking into the stretch. Beautiful, guys. One more inhale. And slowly, wherever you're at in your posture, just come out of it really, really gently. You wanna honor your body. Beautiful, guys. Come down on to your calves. Wonderful. And guys, that is camel pose. All right, guys, pose number seven is such a pretty name. And it, it, again, I love so many yoga poses, but this one is really, really beautiful, especially when you're in the entire pose, which is mermaid pose. And a lot of y'all have actually asked me out there for this one in particular. So I'm excited to share how to get into it with y'all. So let's do it. So for mermaid, we're gonna actually start by standing. Let's take a nice deep breath in. Beautiful, let's come down into a forward fold. Breathe in, halfway up. We're actually gonna come into a downward dog to start. You're gonna breathe into your stretch. Nice guys. So we're gonna breathe in, bring your right leg up like such. And this one, 
you're gonna bring it forward and you're actually going to come into a pigeon pose, like such. From here, you're basically in a seated pigeon now. We're not gonna drop the pigeon down though like we normally would if we just wanted to stretch for pigeon. With this one, basically, we are going to end up bringing this back foot up. So you're gonna bend your knee and then you are going to make a formation like such with your arms. And you'll see it's kind of like a, an O with the arms. So if you're here, this is basically the first start of this. So if you just wanna stay here and get the stretch from here, be my guest. Again, honor where you're at today in your practice. If you want to bend this back leg like such, beautiful, you're going to take your opposite arm and basically link it like so, and then bring this other arm around you. So you basically end up with a formation like this. Now, I'm gonna twist myself a little bit so you guys can actually see this more. So it ends up looking like this. Now you can look up. It's almost like you have a little halo with your arms around your head. And if you're in this posture, let's take a few breaths together. Hmm. Just sink into it. Feeling like a mermaid or a merman, whatever you are out there watching. Keep breathing. Let's take one more breath together. And slowly, always, always with yoga, it's all gentle. You just want to gently come out of it. Beautiful. You can bring that back leg in. Oh, amazing, guys. So we are going to do the other side together to even it out. Let's just maybe do a little bit of a leg shake to get into doing the other side. Beautiful. So I'm going to actually come to this side of the mat so you guys will be able to see the pose once it's done. So let's take a nice deep inhale together. Beautiful. Breathe out. Bring it down. Forward fold. Breathe in. Halfway up and breathe out into your beautiful down dog. Let's just take a breath here. Beautiful guys. So from here, we are going to breathe in, bring your leg up. Wonderful. And then come into a pigeon. Wonderful. Just drop that back foot down onto your mat. Beautiful guys, make sure that you're always squeezing so you're getting the best workout. We wanna work ourselves out in yoga. So from here, you're going to breathe in. And again, if you're here, just stay here. If this is all you wanna to do today, beautiful. Honor your, where you're at in your practice. Otherwise, you can bend this back leg up, lock it to your arm, Bring this arm up like such, and then come in to your mermaid on this side. Keep breathing. Feeling the happy vibes flowing throughout your body. Amazing, guys. One more breath in and breathe it out. As you breathe out, release and let's just bring that leg in front and center. And there you have it guys. There is your mermaid pose. All right, last but certainly not least, I could not do happiness boosting yoga without our final pose of the day, which is happy baby. So let's do it together. So for happy baby, you're actually gonna come down to your mat and come onto your back and just lie flat like such. From here, 
You're going to bring your knees, bend them, and just bring them up to the sky like such. So you're gonna have a bend in your knees. You're going to take your hands, link them either, there's a few variations. You can link them to the edges of your outer feet, or what I like to do is basically lock them and link them to the big toes. Now you wanna have your elbows on the insides, as you can see, of your knees. And from here, you're basically just going to pull down on those big toes, or if you've chosen the sides of your feet, whichever is fine, just you wanna pull down. So basically, you end up in a posture that looks like this. And you're basically just trying to pull your knees as far down um, and apart as possible so you do come into literally a happy baby posture. And with this one in particular, you really do feel such a good, just a good feeling tingling in your entire body. It's just a really fun pose. So from here, let's just take a few breaths and really get into our happy baby. Release any tension you're feeling in any part of your body. Just let it melt into your mat. Let's bring a nice big smile to our face. What a beautiful sequence together today. Conjuring up all those happy vibes. Inhale and exhale. Let's do one more breath together. And on your exhale, slowly release your feet and breathe out. Woo! I had a nice little crack there. All right, guys, drop your feet to your mat, roll onto your side. You can come up now, and there you have it. There is your happy baby. Happiness. It seems to be the ultimate goal that most of us are trying to achieve. And the beautiful thing about happiness is that those who are happy tend to make others happy as it is contagious. So it's definitely a topic worth studying. As someone who's had ups and downs, like all of y'all watching out there, it's something that I've always wanted to understand so that I can uplift myself and also uplift others. I've literally spent years fascinated with and learning various ways to boost happiness. And I can genuinely say that I feel really excited, not because I didn't have any challenges come up this week, I did but I choose not to focus on them and instead focus on the lessons learned or the wins of my week and the good and bad moments that have led me to this one that we're sharing right now. When you train yourself to see the blessings in everything, you really realize that there are just so many reasons to be happy. And joy is contagious, so when you're putting out those, those good, those positive vibes, you're basically shifting the energy in your world, but also the world at large. And that thought makes me overjoyed, hence why I do work and live the way that I do. And when you do more of what ignites your spirit within, you just end up catching yourself in these moments of smiling just because. And you just never know who else may catch your ray of sunshine. Which is why I had to create this episode for y'all. I'm constantly asked how I'm happy so much of the time. And guess what? I am ready to share the goods with y'all. So without further ado, the following are habits that you can do daily to feel in your happiest state of being. All right, so coming in at number one, and in no particular order for happiness habits that you can do every day is to smile. Yes, I know it sounds really simple, but 
I want to share a story with you guys. Years ago, I just want to give a huge shout out to all my fellow Torontonians. Love y'all. So I was born in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And one of the most popular streets here is called Young Street. Why do I bring this all up with you guys? Because when I was really little, I remember taking a drive with my dad down this extremely busy street and we stopped at a red light. And I'll never forget the moment that he asked me, he said, Mandy, I want you to be aware of everyone who's walking by and I want you to just look, watch everyone's face and see how many people you can point out who are actually smiling. And I sat there and I literally could not believe my eyes. Almost every single person on this busy street who was walking in front of our car was not smiling. And honestly, it made such a big imprint in my little mind at the time as to how often we can go as humans without even smiling sometimes throughout the course of an entire day. And so it really made me hyper aware of wanting to smile more, wanting to just put that positive energy out. And I truly believe when we smile, it's our way of showing the world that we really do want to share that happiness, that inner joy with other people. And even for ourselves, like I smile at myself in the mirror because I like looking at that reflection smiling back at me. It's, it's you know, that give and take of good positive energy through your God-given smile. So smiling is a beautiful way for you to feel happier. And when you actually smile, when you use the muscles in your mouth area and you smile, you actually do produce hormones within that bring you to a more elevated state on a physiological level. So smiling is a beautiful, simple, easy way to make yourself happier within and also share some happiness with those around you. And I will say one last little note, laughter is also an amazing way to feel happier every day. Daily laughter is an absolute must in my life and I always feel happier when I'm smiling and laughing and just uplifting the energy around me with both of those. So, all right, on to tip number two. Tip number two for you guys with daily happiness habits is, and I know this probably is not going to shock you, exercise. Yes, physical activity is a great way every day to raise your vibe and feel more joy within. Now, again, on a physiological level, when we exercise, endorphins, which are those feel-good hormones, are released in our entire bodies. So that makes sense from a scientific standpoint, but also you'll be glowing when you exercise. And I don't know about y'all, but I always feel sexier when I've worked up a sweat and I'm feeling, you know, those hormones rushing through my body and I'm feeling like I look my best, I feel my best. I often say, especially as a female, I'm not sure if some of y'all can uh, resonate out there, but, and whether you're a guy or, or, or a woman, I mean, Basically, I always like to think and I always say I feel just as sexy in my running shoes as I do in my high heels and you can change it to dress shoes, I guess, if you're a guy out there. But honestly, like whether it's lifting weights, doing yoga like we did earlier, you know, doing cardio of some form, I always feel just just so happy whenever I'm moving my body. I mean, before I even filmed this episode, I was dancing around to some fun music and I can certainly say that I felt so much happier when I was moving. You know, it literally shakes up our energy. It, it gets us into a higher state of being because you literally change your state. You're not staying stagnant or stuck. You are moving your body and you are releasing these amazing endorphins. Another reason why exercising daily can lead to you feeling happier is because 
when we exercise and especially when we do it every day, we tend to take care of ourselves in other ways. And overall, it just allows us to be, you know, focusing a lot of attention on self care. And when we take care of ourselves, first and foremost, we tend to be happier. And I'm not gonna say that it's always the case that the more in shape you get physically, you know, the more in shape the other areas of your life become, but there does seem to be quite a correlation I've seen amongst the people who I know who are the happiest, who take the best care of their physical bodies because it really does um, get you into the routine and habit of prioritizing yourself so that you are filling yourself up first so that you can pour from that well of happiness inside and pour that and share that with others as well. All right, tip number three is getting enough sleep. Now, if all y'all out there have ever suffered from insomnia or have even just had one or a few nights of bad sleep, y'all know how cranky you can feel without getting adequate rest. An exhausted person is not a happy person. I know, it's not rocket science, guys. But here's the thing, even though most of us are aware that getting enough sleep is important for not just being happy, but overall wellness, a lot of us still tend to cut uh, our sleep by too much. And that can lead to, again, not feeling happy, but also it can lead to lowered immune system, getting sick, stress is a huge one, and basically overall performance in your life, but also at work. And we don't wanna be underperformers. I know y'all watching are not underperformers. You're overachievers. So getting enough rest is another way that you can boost your happiness levels. And speaking of rest, tip number four for daily habits for more happiness in your life is waking up early. Yes, y'all heard me correctly. I'm talking about rising and shining. And this isn't just popular opinion or mine. This has actually been proven by research that people who tend to wake up earlier actually do have more feel good hormones going through their bodies when they do. People who woke up earlier in the study actually said they felt happier than those who hit their snooze button for a few extra. <laughs> Yes, I just did that. And no, in case you're wondering, I don't actually snore in real life, just for YouTube. <laughs> Another reason why people who wake up earlier tend to be happier is because they can fit more good mood boosting activities into their morning routine, such as yoga, working out, you know, for people who like to get their coffee and kind of meditate over their coffee or even meditation. When you wake up early, you tend to have more time to actually fit those good feeling activities into your schedule. So that's another reason why morning people do tend to feel happier. And lastly, you've probably heard this before, but people who wake up earlier do tend to feel more productive and energized throughout the rest of their day. And more hours in the day tends to mean a more rich and fulfilling life. And you won't feel as rushed to get all the things on your to-do list done throughout your daytime hours. So it really is a double win. More hours in the day means a potentially more rich and meaningful life. And more hours in the day means that you're probably gonna get more off of your to-do list done throughout your day hours. So it really means a delicious double win. All right, you guys hear me talk about this next subject a lot. Tip number five for daily habits that can help you to feel happier is good mood foods. Yes, you heard me. We're talking about one of my favorite subjects again, <laughs> being a foodie, good mood foods. I truly believe that when you eat well, you feel swell. Yes, I said a little rhyme again for you guys, and it's one that I swear and I live by. As someone who loves to eat as much as I love being active, which is a lot, 
I have always loved studying the way that food affects us, not just physically, but also mentally. For years, I've passionately studied nutrition, diet, and the correlation they have to us on our moods, our longevity, and also prevention. I especially find it fascinating to know how and which foods affect our moods and emotions. Now, I'm not going to talk about food without actually naming some foods for y'all that you can start eating today to feel happier. So according to research, some feel-good foods are coconuts, spinach and other greens, dark chocolate, I know, big shocker for y'all, and it actually happens to be one of my personal faves too. Now, when we're talking chocolate, you wanna obviously make sure it's high quality chocolate, but you also, to get the full good mood food effect of eating this dark chocolate, you wanna just make sure that the chocolate is over 70% cocoa. A few other good mood foods you can add to your diet are chia seeds, avocados, green tea, walnuts, and shiitake mushrooms. Now there are so many foods out there. If you just Google which foods can boost your mood, you will find that there are so many that you guys can start eating right now today to boost your happiness levels. All right, daily habit for happiness number six is reflection. Now, reflection is so important for our happiness levels because, and I tend to do this um, typically, I mean, obviously I think about, you know, what's going on in my life and I try to refine it constantly on a daily basis, but I really find a beautiful way to do this is actually with uh, journaling. And I've talked to you guys about this before in other episodes, basically in my morning journal, it allows me a space to write down my thoughts. It allows me a space to reflect on my beliefs, my behaviors, my habits that are either working for me or are not. And there's a really beautiful quote that I came across a few years back that was, what we don't measure, we cannot progress in. Basically meaning, if we don't actually bring awareness to what's going on in our lives every single day, we're not able to progress. What you don't measure, you can't progress in because you're not really, you're not measuring it to know, well, I did something this way today and am I improving or am I staying the same or am I actually, you know, maybe digressing in whatever it is that I'm focused on. So by virtue of us reflecting, we have the ability to be able to really just grow in so many areas of our lives and like you know with the last episode I did on detoxing I'm gonna put a link to that for you guys below you know it's really a matter of constantly just asking yourself like how am I feeling in my life how are things either working for me or are there things that I need to delete? Are there things that I need to, you know, detox my life of? And I'm all for talking about, you know, the positive benefits of reflecting, but I think it's also important to make note of what happens when we don't reflect. So when we don't reflect, that's usually when things like staying in a job that we hate happens, things like staying in a relationship that is, you know, no pun intended, past its expiry date. We tend to do things and stay in situations that are no longer serving us simply because we haven't really thought that much about it or we're just not willing to go there. And that's what reflection allows us to do. It allows us to have that that quiet, peaceful, not, you know, sometimes it can be really actually, I shouldn't always say that it's peaceful because sometimes reflection hurts, you know, sometimes reflection is kind of scary because you have to think about stuff that you have to be radically honest with internally. But here's a beautiful thing about reflection. Every time in my life when I've had a significant period of hyper reflection, it's as though I've gone through all of these things that are going on in my mind and it has allowed me to have the most profound transformations in my life. So if you guys can just start by reflecting even a few minutes every day, it really can make a significant difference in your happiness levels.
All right, do I have your attention now? <laughs> Tip number seven is something I talk to you guys about a lot because it's really important and this I swear to God that this is one of the reasons why I am as happy as I am, which is deep breathing. So deep breathing, otherwise known as pranayama in yoga, is a beautiful, simple way for us to feel happier. So pranayama comes from the Sanskrit words prana, which means breath or life force, and yama, which means control. So essentially, it's just controlling your breath. And when we do this, especially when we're practicing yoga, but you don't even have to be doing your yoga practice. You can literally just take, let's actually take a nice deep breath in together right now, just to share this, this beautiful habit. See, it literally brings a smile to my face when I do deep breathing because it lowers my stress levels and for all of you watching out there you can literally start to implement this today even right now after this video if you just spend a few minutes deep breathing chances are you're gonna feel happier and if you can do that on a consistent daily basis you are going to start feeling better every single day of your life all right daily habit number eight is to connect with loved ones. Now y'all know I've joked about being mushy Mandy and it's not for no reason. There have been so many studies done on the effects of us as just human beings needing really close connections in order to thrive. And study after study has basically shown that when we connect, you know, intimately and lovingly with other humans, it makes us happier. In fact, a lack of connection with your loved ones actually is a worse risk for health than smoking. I know, that's crazy, right? It, it sounds insane. But we love and we crave connecting with our loved ones as it's our human nature. And being lonely actually can lead to things like depression, anxiety, actual sickness. And as I've said to y'all before, when there is stress that we are dealing with emotionally, I really believe that all physical ailments in our body stem from stress. So loneliness does, uh, you know, account for a lot of that stress that a lot of us are feeling out there potentially and when we feel that way it just makes our immune systems actually lowered and more susceptible to illness another way put happiness is love and when we're connecting with people who really mean a lot to us we are exchanging that love aka happiness and it really just in, it inevitably allows us all to feel happier when we are together and sharing and caring those loving vibes and at the end of the day, from all the books I've read, from all the experiences I've gone through, and all of the you know education I've done on human connection and psychology and sociology, you know, at the end of the day, what we all are really looking for is connection, even more so than life experience, than education, than you know, traveling and all these things. Bottom line, anyone who I've asked, and also, you know, science is proven by studying, you know, humans for so many years now, we are all craving connection. So if, if here's a way that you guys can start feeling better today, I know we're in social distancing, so it actually makes this one a little bit of a challenge because typically the best way to connect is in person, but because some of us are not able to do that right now, the best way to connect is go online or call a friend or Zoom someone who you're close to and start sharing those feel good vibes because I know for my for myself, whenever I connect with either my relatives who mean the absolute world to me or when I'm connecting with close girlfriends or other friends of mine, honestly, as soon as I end that conversation or that connection with them, it's like I feel high on life. So 
From my heart to y'all, I hope that we're sharing this beautiful connected moment right now. So I am pouring a piece of my heart out to you guys to connect with you, to just show you, like I can't stop smiling just thinking about the hopeful effect of making you guys happier just in this moment right now. That's how powerful the power of connection is. So I invite you all right now when this video ends, Think of a few people that you can reach out to and do your part. Be kind enough to reach out to those who you care about because you guys together through the power of connection can uplift and help each other to be happier. All right, that last tip, um, the end of that last tip was a beautiful transition to daily habit number nine for happiness, which is to be kind. And when I say be kind, I'm talking both about being kind to yourself and also to others. So in my experience, there is nothing quite as satisfying as giving back, especially when you have zero expectation of getting anything in return. Now, the beautiful thing with kindness and giving back is inevitably, usually, at least in my, you know, experiences in life, I always end up getting this feeling of just such happiness and positivity and joy when I can make someone else's day or make someone else smile. And that's a beautiful thing about kindness, guys. Yes, by all means, it's a really beautiful, you know, act when you can donate money and finances to causes and things that are important that, you know, that are making great changes in the world. That's wonderful. But kindness in itself doesn't have to cost a cent. It literally can just mean you being aware of making someone's day. Like I said, you know, maybe it's holding the door for someone. Maybe it's calling up a friend. Maybe it's being there for someone when they're going through something really challenging. Maybe it is literally, as I mentioned in one of the other tips, just smiling or laughing, sharing laughter with somebody. It doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to cost you a thing to be kind. And on this tangent, because we are talking about kindness, I just wanna make a note that it is just as important to be kind to yourself. And that can start with how you speak to yourself. So positive self-talk is something that I literally have taught myself over year, over the years because it's so important when it comes to being happier to really just practice living kindness with yourself. I truly believe that all of you watching out there were all born lights to shine and to make this world a brighter place. And together, we can positively illuminate and change our world. It all starts with you creating your own inner sunshine so that you can be a ray of light to someone else. All right, flowing positively along, no pun intended. Tip number 10 for a happiness habit is working hard. Yes, you heard me correctly, working hard, because here's the thing guys, and I will always stress this, as someone who considers myself a pretty hard worker every single day, I don't want this tip to be confused with this whole mentality I've also heard where it's like, hustle, 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 you know, hustle hard, you know, that's all that life's about. Please don't confuse it with that at all. What I mean by work hard is basically, to me anyways, and I'm sure a lot of y'all out there can resonate as I know you guys have huge goals and aspirations that you're working towards right now in your lives. Working hard to me basically means putting yourself, putting your best effort into, you know, creating that dream life of whatever that means for you in terms of what your mind wants success to look like. And so when I say work hard, I don't mean slaving through your life and not enjoying yourself. I don't mean that at all. What I mean by work hard as a daily habit that helps people to feel their happiest is that that sweet satisfaction you get when every day you're working towards accomplishing your goals and you ultimately are able to create a, a, a life that you absolutely love. To me, at least, there is 
nothing that compares to that feeling of satisfaction that just that lights me up that makes me so happy when I know I have worked so incredibly hard to accomplish a goal in my life and I get there I make the finish line and another thing I want to stress with this point in particular is it's not about rushing through life it's about being present in that journey in your progress in you know, the steps that it's taken you to get to that end goal. For some of you watching, maybe that means getting a degree. Maybe it means, you know, landing a a, a dream job. Maybe it means, you know, finally being in that fulfilling, passionate, beautiful, loving relationship with a partner. Whatever it means to you to, to be successful in your life, all I'm saying with this one is if you wanna be happier, Work your butt off every day towards those goals that you have because when you win, quote unquote, at whatever competition it is every day, being the better version of yourself, when you do that, guys, you are going to feel so bleeping happy when you cross that finish line. Progress is pure joy. All right, guys. Da, 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 da. And now for happiness hack that I'm going to share with y'all. So this one is a simple but game changing happiness hack that I have implemented in my own life. Hence why I want to share with y'all right now. So what is it? It is to go home and rest every single day. I know some of y'all might be sitting there thinking, uh, okay, Mandy, like, you kind of, you made this out to sound like it was going to be some profound thing, but like go home and rest every day. I'll tell you why this is a game changer. My belief is that your home should be your absolute sanctuary. It should be the place that you go to, to feel peaceful and comforted. And yes, I am a homebody speaking <laughs> from my heart right now, but here's the thing guys. What I mean and why this is such an important, important happiness habit that you should do every single day is because the last tip of working so hard towards your goals needs to be balanced out with this hack of going home and actually taking conscious time to rest. You want to make sure that you're able to, at least at the end of your day, shut off your work mode and actually relax. Your home should be a place that you absolutely love and want to be in. It should be the place that you want to retire to at the end of a potentially long and or hard and or stressful and or even positive work day. It should be a place of serenity and positivity and peace and your ultimate place to relax. And ultimately, your home should really be, as as corny as the saying is, your home should be where your heart is. And so, you know, whether that means you having a family or pets or just being surrounded by an environment that really just feels like this absolute encompassing of like so much love surrounding you, that is what your home should be. It should be that place that is happy. And I'm just gonna put this out there because like I'm really speaking from the heart right now. If any of you are in a situation where your home is not a happy place right now or you're not feeling emotionally connected to your environment, I would highly suggest maybe take some reflection time and figure out ways that you can change that for yourself. Because I truly do believe that our environment, as you know from other episodes, our environment plays such an important part of, you know, our entire lives. We spend so much time at home. It needs to be that place that is your ultimate you know, haven, your, your home should be like heaven to you. And if it's not, then do whatever it takes, do what you need to, to get rid of and or add things to it so that it is that place for you. At the end of the day, no pun intended, your home should be where your happiness lies. And by making it a routine to go back to that happy place, literally, 
you are going to be smiling so much more knowing that you get to go back to potentially family, um, pets, and or just an environment that literally makes you feel absolutely overjoyed inside. And on a final happy note, there is no place like being in your happiest state. If you wanna feel in your happiest state, don't dwell on the past and don't worry about the future. Focus fully on living in the present moment and making each one that goes by a happy one. I wanna leave with y'all with, <laughs> I know, y'all know I love my affirmations, but I really wanna leave you with one today that can, you know, get you into a happier state. So here it is. I'm focused on enjoying my life and I find happiness everywhere I look. And one last loving reminder, you always find what you're looking for and where your mind goes, your energy flows. Your thoughts become your actions and the small habits you do daily end up making the biggest difference in your overall lifetime. When you think, do, and be happy, you'll notice that your life ends up being so much more of a rich, meaningful, and fulfilling experience. And doesn't that thought put a big smile on your face? You see what I did there? <laughs> but for real guys, you all have the power within you to change your state at any time, starting right now. Happiness is a choice and you have the power and everything within you to ultimately choose happy every day. And with each new day, it is a new opportunity to make that decision. So why don't we all do ourselves a favor and choose happy. All right, guys, I feel so happy that, no pun intended, we've shared this time together. I want to know, what happiness habit do you plan to start doing, or is there one that you'd add to the list? Comment below and let's share all of our happiness habits with one another so that we can all feel in our happiest state together. And if any of y'all out there are feeling stuck right now or feeling low or down and you want to work with me as a coach or sign up for any of my programs, I will also put the links to that below. And I actually do offer a free intro call so um, we can discuss some of your goals and things that you're dealing with. So if you want to take advantage of that, again, I'll put the link below and you can just contact me through that link because I would be so happy to help you. Also, if y'all want to support this high vibes mission I'm on, including the content creation I do, like this beautiful video I'm sharing with y'all right now, I do have a Patreon page and on that page you can make various donations that will end up rewarding you with things like um, private yoga instructing from me, private meditation instructing from me, um, there's an option for uh, private or group coaching as well as a live group uh, call. So if you all feel it, just only if it comes from your heart space to donate, it really does help me to create the best quality content for y'all. And to all of you guys watching who've already signed up to be a patron of mine and to support me from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much because it really does mean the world to me knowing that you guys support what I'm doing, but also allowing me to help so many people through all the work that I'm doing. All right, High Vibes Nation, hashtag. I love when y'all tag me at Mandy J. Ross on social media, and I want to see y'all this week tagging me, or anytime for that matter, in your happiness state of being. So just make sure you tag at Mandy J. Ross on socials, and who knows, you might even end up in one of my stories. All right, if I still have your attention and you're still watching, you like this video, so please just do me the courtesy of putting a little thumbs up like on it, as well as subscribing to my channel and making sure that you hit that little notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when I upload new videos. And I have lots of positive content coming up for you guys, so please do. And on that positive note, thank you so much for joining me for this video.
Namaste, and as always, I'm wishing y'all a beautiful day.